Do you guys know what day it is? It's National Redhead Day or National Red Hair Day, which has been an annual celebration for some since 2015. So I figure this would be a good time to take a closer look at something that I know people are curious about, but never really address, as it is just hair color. Or is there more to it than that? Now, some people have associated red hair with the RH blood factor, but it's not genetically linked. Those markers are on different chromosomes. Some genetic traits do come in pairs like blonde hair and blue eyes often come as a pair. The same with dark skin and dark hair, a much paler, lighter skin with red hair. Most of us are not geneticists, and even if we were, this is not absolute. But so far, what we do know is that it takes both parents with the redhead trait, MC1R, to have a child with red hair. We're not talking about the hair color itself, but the genetic code found on the chromosome. That doesn't mean two redheads have to get together. They just have to have the genetic coding for it. But this is not about genetics more than it is about history. It's something that may be in the form of an agenda. There are people who believe in eugenics, folks. History has shown us that. In certain locations, people have tried to get rid of certain genetics that existed within their population to try and manipulate the genetics of their future population. This happened. It is happening again. I'm not sure, but the evidence doesn't look good. So about 40% of the population carries the gene for red hair. But redheads only make up about 1% of the population. Actually, here are a few facts to know. What causes red hair? Red hair is a recessive genetic trait caused by a series of mutations in the melanocortin-1 receptor, MC1R, a gene located on chromosome 16. As a recessive trait, it must be inherited from both parents to cause the hair to become red. Consequently, there are far more people carrying the mutation for red hair than people actually having red hair. In Scotland, approximately 13% of the population are redheads, although 40% carry at least one mutation. There are many kinds of red hair, some fairer or mixed with blonde, strawberry blonde, some darker, like auburn hair, which is brown hair with a reddish tint. This is because some people only carry one or a few of the several possible MC1R mutations. The lightness of the hair ultimately depends on other mutations, regulating the general pigmentation of both the skin and hair. Now here are a few facts that are even a bit more interesting. Skin and hair pigmentation is caused by two different kinds of melanin, eumelanin, and pheomelanin. The most common is eumelanin, a brown-black polymer responsible for dark hair and skin and the tanning of light skin. Pheomelanin has a pink to red hue and is present in lips, nipples, and genitals. The mutations in the MC1R gene imparts the hair and skin more pheomelanin than eumelanin, causing both red hair and freckles. Redheads have very fair skin, almost always lighter than non-redheads. This is an advantage in northern latitudes and very rainy countries where sunlight is sparse, as lighter skin improves the absorption of sunlight, which is vital for the production of vitamin D by the body. The drawback is that it confers redheads a higher risk for both sunburns and skin cancer. 
Studies have demonstrated that people with red hair are more sensitive to thermal pain and also require greater amounts of anesthetic than people with other hair colors. The reason is that redheads have a mutation in a hormone receptor that can apparently respond to at least two different hormones. The melanocyte stimulating hormone for pigmentation and endorphins, the pain relieving hormone. Folk wisdom has long described redheads as hot-tempered and short-tempered. If you did an autosomal DNA test, you can check if you carry some of the MC1R mutations. So this is the part where things get really interesting. The DNA. Britain's DNA. The Redhead Project. So this was an effort to trace the MC1R gene. Because someone with red hair, obvious. Someone without red hair, not so obvious. Some people don't know they have this gene, but they figured the number was around 40%. And from their investigations, they were able to map out the population of carriers. Now I have to tell you guys something. There are people in this world who are looking for ways to eradicate certain genes within the human population. Forget about race, I'm not talking about races. I'm talking about certain genetics that people may or may not know they have. Even though we have gene editing technologies like CRISPR, it would be absurd to think that they can somehow edit something like the MC1R gene out of existence. If it is an evolutionary trait, due to environmental adaptation, then that wouldn't work. They don't have enough information about it anyway. But I guess just because they can't do something doesn't mean they won't try, right? And they have. With all the studies they have done on people with red hair, they have found that there are several other variations that are associated with it. Several. Redheads make up approximately 1-2% to of the human population on the planet. But let me tell you the list of some other facts I found interesting. Redheads are more likely to be left-handed. The National Redhead Day is celebrated, of course, on November 5th, which is during the time of this recording. Red hair varies in different hues of red. Ginger phobia refers to the fear of people with red hair, which I didn't really know existed. There is a common belief that redheads could become extinct in the next 100 years. Probably not as long as people exist. I don't think that is going to happen. Red hair is often more difficult to dye. Dark hair can turn red in the case of severe protein deficiency. Those with red hair will not have their hair turn as gray when they age. Redheads may be more prone to developing Parkinson's disease, which has something to do with the release of dopamine. Now, back in the time of war, Hitler forbade those with red hair to marry. Ancient Rome valued redhead slaves much more than dark-haired ones. The supposed first wife of Adam, Lilith, was said to have red hair. Satan is often portrayed with red hair. The ancient Greeks believed that redheads could become vampires. Of course, back then when you say something like that, people are going to run with it, right? Some scholars believe that Adam had red hair. Some artistic renditions of Adam and Eve to pick Eve with red hair. Some parts of Africa still believe that redheads are connected to witches. Pagan witches would dye their hair red to perform certain rituals. Many women with red hair were burned alive during the 16th and 17th centuries. Redheads were once commonly sacrificed in Egypt. Women with red hair are more sexually active compared to other colored hair women. And this is really attributed to the rarity of the features. 
The gene that causes red hair, by the way, can increase a person's ability to make vitamin D. Redheads would make their melanin internally. Women with red hair bruise easier than women who do not. Another study found that women with red hair require 19% more anesthesia to make them sleep. Redheads with blue eyes are the rarest combination. Those with red hair are more prone to developing melanoma, a type of cancer. Redheads are more sensitive to changes in temperature. Redheads have fewer strands of hair per square inch than the average person, but have thicker hair. Now there is this phenomena occurring in Hollywood that you may be aware of, where they are swapping out white red-headed characters from movies, television, and comic books with black characters. I'll show you. Wally West. Jimmy Olsen, Ariel the Little Mermaid, Jim Gordon from the Batman comics, Annie, little redhead Annie, Starfire from the Titans, MJ, Peter Parker's girlfriend, Batgirl, Iris West, April O'Neil of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Hawk Girl, Alice from Hellboy, Triss Marigold from The Witcher, Alice Masters, the Fantastic Four, Rusty from Deadpool, Bo from she Isaac from Castlevania series, Joyce McCoy of Riverdale, Rip Cord from G.I. Joe, as well as Cyclone from the latest Black Adam movie. Now this is not as much a phenomena as it is an agenda. But whose agenda? This is part of the manufactured Mandela effect that they are trying to create by changing history right in front of you. And kids today actually grow up with a different version of a character than you did. Yeah, that's not going to cause any confusion in conversation. You know, people say that Hollywood because of their political influence, they may believe redheads to be a non-protected people and so they just toss them out. To me, this is a dark agenda and has nothing to do with representation and everything to do with some weird, twisted Hollywood rite of passage. I really think there is some type of brainwashing going on here because they keep making these types of changes regardless if the property fails or not. They don't even care if they lose money. So that should tell you something. It doesn't really matter what the character was originally. People don't like it when you change things. It's just as simple as that. Otherwise, you do the normal thing and come up with something new. But understand that the companies are doing this. Not really the creators, the companies, because that's what companies do. They come out with a product, and then the same product with different flavors. Remember the era where Hollywood was trying to sell everyone remastered versions of old movies? Blu-ray editions? New sound versions? Then came reboots and remakes, and now they are swapping out the race or gender of characters. It's just another form of that. Making live action movies from cartoons is just another form of that. But Hollywood is doomed. And it seems that the independent market is where it's at. Anyway, there are always agendas in place. And these days I can assure you that most people from all races feel like targets. Because the truth of the matter is to demonic forces, all of us are. That's all for now, and there is more to come. I thought this would be an interesting topic of discussion, as some of you may have been curious about some things when it comes to red hair. For example, I don't know why some of the ancient stories talk about giants having red hair, such as the Kandahar giant and 
some of the giants described by Native American tribes. There are genetics that some humans have that are mysterious, and they don't really want you to know about that. It's something that may be revealed in the near future, but ultimately, God has control over those genetics. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. You can follow me on Instagram at J-A-E Woodward. Everyone have a great day. Stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.